Animals evolving to live in colonies seems to be a paradox, flying in the face of the core components of evolution by natural selection. Whereas many species of animals will fight one another to pass on their genes, the workers of ant or bee colonies will actively help with the reproductive success of other members of the colony, and are often even sterile, so have evolved to be unable to pass on their genes. Charles Darwin even considered the evolution of animal colonies that do this to be a major problem for his theory. So how did some animals start helping other animals pass on their genes? Technically, all social animals like humans, elephants and wolves live in a sort of colony, but the type of colony that insects like ants and bees live in are known as eusocial colonies, and these types of colony are defined by three principles. The animals live in one place, most commonly in some sort of nest, caring for each other's young, and most importantly, reproductive altruism, where the workers will aid in the reproductive success of other colony members. Hymenoptera, the order of animal that contains bees and ants, offer the best examples of these types of colonies, because it has evolved as many as eight separate times in this group. However, these types of colonies are by no means contained among Hymenoptera, as termites and weevils also form these types of colonies, but also some non-insects do as well. There is a type of snapping shrimp, called Cynalpheus regalis, that forms societies consisting of a queen and as many as 300 individuals that protect and feed on a type of sponge. And even some mammals live like this, as mole rat burrows only have one female and one to three males that reproduce, while the rest of the members of the colony are sterile and function as workers, eating and gathering tubers from the ground. So colonies have convergently evolved on many occasions but also these colonies share many other features as well. Many having advanced caste systems where they divide labor up among different members of the colony that have different body sizes and shape to help them with their appointed tasks. This is very well demonstrated among Hymenoptera where the queen can be 20 times the size of the regular workers and sometimes ants have soldiers that guard the workers while they are gathering resources that have massive heads and jaws but nearly all eusocial animals have evolved different castes within their colonies. Termites also have convergently evolved very similar castes to ants, with soldier termites. But even mole rats have castes, if nowhere near as pronounced as with ants and termites. Some members of the mole rat colonies are known as dispersers that will leave the colonies to find a mate from another colony to stop inbreeding. These individuals are distinct from the other members of the colonies, as they usually have more fat reserves for the journey and are only interested in mating with individuals from foreign colonies. So this is an evolutionary pathway that is very common once animals have evolved into a colony that is not really seen in any other types of animals. Eusocial colonies are confusing, but they do not defy natural selection as much as you might think. Since the 60s, it has been argued that there is a type of natural selection called kin selection, where animals may evolve to help with the reproductive success of their close relatives because they will share a lot of the same genes, and so by helping close relatives, they are actually ensuring the survival of their own genes, just indirectly. A study in 2010 conducted on red squirrels supported this. Red squirrels sometimes adopt orphan squirrel pups, and it was found that they will only do this when the squirrel pup is a close relative, and this sort of behavior is known across many species of mammal. Looking after their close relatives would mean that there is more of a chance for the squirrel's genes to survive, and so there would be a selective pressure for the squirrel to start caring about the survival and reproductive success of their close relatives. This would show how kin selection may have played a part in the evolution of nearly all social animals, but you social animals took this a step further. In most cases, animals will have siblings that vary in relatedness, because animals usually mate with several different individuals throughout their life. However, in monogamous animals, that only have one mate throughout their life, all of their children will be of the same relatedness to their siblings as they are to their own offspring. This would amplify kin selection because the animals would be just as likely to pass on their genes with their own offspring as they would be with the reproductive success of their parents, meaning the selective pressure to reproduce would be just as strong as helping their parents reproduce. And this could be how eusocial groups got started and is known as the monogamous hypothesis. As explained, Hymenoptera have organized themselves into colonies on many different occasions, and this may be because of their very strange way of determining sex in their offspring. A fertilized egg from an ant or a wasp will produce a female, 
but if the egg is left unfertilized, it will produce a male, meaning the males are reproduced asexually. This is important because it means that male Hymenoptera only have one set of chromosomes, whereas female ants have two, like other animals. So this means that unlike other animals that are equally related to their parents and offspring, as they are to their siblings, Hymenoptera share 50% of their genes with their mother and offspring, like most animals, but share 75% of their genes with their siblings. This means that they actually pass on more of their genes from helping their mother reproduce more siblings than if they would produce offspring themselves, creating a big selective pressure for the reproductive success of other members of the colony, and explains the abundance of eusocial colonies among Hymenoptera. Adding to this, many species of bees will invest less in or even kill male members of the colony when times are tough, which makes sense seeing as the female bees will only share 25% of their genes with the asexually produced males. Eusocial colonies are also usually centered on extracting a resource that has a patchy distribution, which may be important for their evolution. For instance, termites rely on rotting and decaying wood. Naked mole rats rely on eating tubers that they dig in their burrows and the snapping shrimp that live in colonies rely on a type of sponge. As these resources are focused in certain spots and are far and few between, the animals would be disadvantaged to leave as individuals, because they may not be able to find other resources but would benefit from forming colonies and sharing the resource. And also, these resources would need to be defended, which they would have a lot more success doing if they could band together. The exception to this is Hymenoptera, that are usually scavengers or make their own food, and do not rely on a singular resource that needs protecting. However, they may have originally banded together to defend their colony from predators. There are species of solitary bee, like mason bees, that are not eusocial, but make nests near one another, sometimes even making their nests communally, but keep to themselves and look after their young individually. The benefit of this seems to be that it's easier to defend their nests from predators. So this may have been what kick-started the evolution of colonies in ants and bees, if not a singular resource. Hymenoptera have not just organized themselves into colonies the most amount of times, but they were also one of the first known groups of animals to live this way. Ant, bee, and wasp colonies are thought to have first started to appear in the late Cretaceous, but may have evolved a lot longer ago than this. And as eusocial colonies have evolved on so many separate occasions, it is possible that there may have been other insects that evolved into colonies before this, but have gone extinct. In northern Myanmar, there is a large amount of amber that dates back to around 99 million years ago that has yielded many interesting animals, like ancient birds, lizards, frogs, and even a dinosaur tail. However, one of the most abundant ancient animals to find in the amber are insects and one of the discoveries was of a 100 million year old bee that was covered in pollen, and had made adaptations for pollen collection and carrying. There are also ancient ants that have been found in amber from the same time period. Ants and bees evolved from wasps, and during the Cretaceous, at the time when these insects were at large, it would have been when they had just diverged from them. And this can be seen in these ancient ant specimens, that have many wasp features that modern ants do not have, because they may have lost them since the Cretaceous. Because some ants have been living in eusocial colonies for so long, they have evolved some of the most advanced ways of finding or even growing food. As some species of ants, like leaf-cutting ants, developed agriculture, and this may have happened at least 30 million years ago, 30 million years before humans. Leaf-cutting ants don't eat the leaves they cut from plants, they feed it to a fungus they farm and then eat the fungus. It is thought that this started because the ants may have bought an infected leaf and the fungus was able to spread to the other leaves as ants often store their food for some period of time before consuming them. And as this became a good food source for the ants, they started to switch to eating the fungus instead of the leaves. The interesting thing is that these ants have been doing this for so long that the fungus they eat is a unique species of fungus not found in the wild, so they have domesticated their own crop and the ants are so strongly linked to it that many species of queen that go out to form another colony carry a pellet of fungus with them that they use to start growing the first food for that new colony. Around 35 million years ago, South America started to become a lot drier. This would have meant that the wild fungus would have retreated, leaving the fungus in the ant colonies that lived in drier habitats isolated, so it could develop on its own and develop into its own species. This would have been a similar process to humans taking crops out of the wild and isolating them so they can be domesticated. 
now the fungus relies on these ants because they have co-evolved. And in fact, there are many animals and plants that rely on eusocial colonies, as there are many large insectivorous creatures that probably couldn't find enough sustenance unless large colonies of insects existed. And now many plants are reliant on pollination from bees, and ants aerate the soil, allowing water and oxygen to reach plant roots. So eusocial colonies aren't just a strange outcome of evolution, but since the dinosaurs have been around, have been one of the most important animals in the world's ecosystems. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors like Greenfors, Ryuka, Grim Marshall, Sammy Voz, Brandon Klopp, Ken Ham, Nightrunner, and Crazy Cody. If you enjoy content like this, then consider supporting the channel as well.